Welcome back to Home with the Hearst. Today we are going to be talking about preparing and preserving our food for the future. So be sure to follow along. I'm going to start out with talking to you about preserving herbs. We grew a bunch of herbs in our garden this year and the best way to preserve them is to dehydrate them. Some people hang them up to dry out. I like to put them on my dehydrator because it's a sure way to know that all of the moisture is going to be out. It's very quick so I'm not forgetting about it hanging for weeks and upon weeks and I can just put them in my dehydrator, let them dry out for a couple of hours, and then pop them into jars, like take all the leaves and stuff off. I'm also trying some cayenne pepper this year. I'm going to dry them out, ground them up, and make a powder out of them. This can be used for medicinal purposes as well as for anti-inflammatory rubbing on spots that are sore, sore, achy joints, and things like that. Now, a lot of my food I buy in bulk and we use Azure Standard. Azure Standard is a bulk grocery drop. So basically it's like a co-op. Everybody buys their stuff online and then there's a date that's set where a truck delivers all of the food. Everybody meets in that community, gathers um, all of their food up and then piles it up and takes it home. So I've been doing Azure Standard for the last three years now, something like that, and I am now a drop coordinator because I wanted our drop to continue. When the people that were coordinating it before moved, I wanted it to continue, so I became the drop coordinator. Now I buy lots of bulk flour, bulk vegetables that we can store, uh, some canned food items and uh, just some necessities of things that we are going to need in the future. So when we're talking about preparing and preserving our foods, there's a lot of things that we could go ahead and buy in bulk in case there was an emergency. Some of the things that I like to stock up on are salt, flour, rice, oats, root vegetables, like potatoes and onions, things that don't go bad very quickly. And then I will also buy bulk cheeses, some things that can be thrown in, thrown in the freezer, and then I will can what I can from the garden. So some of the things that you need if you're going to store these things in bulk without getting mice in them and things like that. You need some food grade buckets. Now I got these from Azure Standard as well. I prefer the Gamma Seal lids because they screw on and screw off. They seal your food in there nice and tight and it doesn't let air get in there to ruin your food. I also like to have big jars for my spices or for daily use of things like flour, rice, so those things I will get off of a website called Websterant. I'll put a link in the description below. It's not sponsored. But they have some really nice glass jars that I like to put flour and oats and stuff like that in that we daily use. And then the bulk of it will go into the buckets. I am also overrun with eggs right now. We ended up getting 10 more chickens that were given to us. And so we're getting about 12 to 18 eggs a day. And so I am trying to preserve eggs. Now, a lot of people have been talking about freeze drying them. I do not have a freeze dryer, nor do I have the money to buy a freeze dryer at the moment. So I am trying to put them into a lime solution. Never done this, so we are going to try that this year. Okay, so for this part of the video, I'm going to be using vacuum sealer bags and a vacuum sealer. And I got these bags from outofair.com and they are really good freezer bags or just storage bags if you're doing dry goods or something like that. They can be boiled, microwaved, refrigerated, or frozen. They are puncture resistant, so they're very thick 
I think, I can't remember how thick it was. It's a seven layer, four mil puncture free plastic. So it's going to go into the freezer or wherever you want it and you don't have to worry about something poking it or and, and your stuff spilling out. So this would have been a lifesaver when we did our meat chickens a couple years back and because there were so many of them that uh, somehow it punctured the plastic or the plastic kind of like deteriorated or something in the freezer and a lot of them got freezer burn so not the greatest experience with that so I am excited to be using this now I have used these already and I use them um, to store we have bulk mushrooms from Azure Standard and if you know anything about mushrooms they go bad very fast and we get a lot of them so I like to chop them up and put them into the freezer bags in individual portion sizes and then pull them out and cook them whenever we're ready we also get a five pound or this might be six pounds I'm not 100% sure five or six pound block of cheese and if you know anything about cheese once it's opened then it will start to harden in the fridge this is mozzarella and so I don't want that I like it to be in smaller packages so that we can easily use it too and it doesn't go bad quite as fast so while I put these into vacuum sealed bags by out of air I'm going to tell you a little bit more about out of air and how you can get your bags so out of air's mission is to keep your food safe and save you money which I really like <laughs> we always like to save money and with this meal prepping um, we are buying a lot of stuff in bulk and so I don't want to lose the money in my food going bad so being able to prep it put it into bags seal it up throw it in the freezer just ensures that we are going to have some healthy food later in the future as well these bags help prevent freezer burn they have clear markings on them that help you to measure your food and put the exact amount that you want in there. They also have little areas that are white, that are smudge proof, that you can label what's in there. I cannot tell you how many times I have went to the freezer or somewhere and have forgotten to label something. So this is on there for you to be able to describe what's in your bag or the amount or whatever you want to put on there. If you're putting things in the bags that you don't want to put in the freezer, then um, know that you could put them on your shelf and they are going to extend the life of your food as well. So like raisins, I don't know if you buy bulk raisins or uh, nuts or something like that and you maybe want to make your own pouches, that's a, an option for you. I'm gonna leave all the details for getting all of your out of air bags in the description box below. Be sure to click that link and it will take you straight there and you can choose which bags you need for your home. So let's talk preparedness. This is not a video meant to scare anybody or to provoke fear or anything like that. So I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about how we are preparing for winter. We are preparing for an election that might get crazy because the last time we had an election, it got crazy. <laughs> and um, just in general, being prepared and not scared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read for, for you from Proverbs 31. This is about the virtuous woman. And so as a homemaker, the woman, the wife, the mother of the house, it is kind of our job to be the gatekeeper of the home and prepare our home for what could possibly be a catastrophe. I am not saying that this means that we do not have faith in God because we do. We have faith just as he feeds the sparrow, he will feed us. But as the sparrow, the sparrow doesn't just sit in the tree and wait for God to bring the worm or whatever it is to their mouth, to their beak. They still go out and they hunt. Just like the squirrel um, doesn't really fear the winter because it is preparing for winter. It is gathering the nuts. It's gathering... Um, 
all of the seeds and storing them up so that it has what it needs to make it through the winter. That is the kind of faith that we are putting into our God. We are knowing that he will provide for us, but we're not just sitting there waiting for it to come to us. We are out there working and preparing, gathering, and all of that for our homes so that we can protect our homes. No, this is from Proverbs 31. So this is the 13th verse. I'm just going to read from there. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. So this is just showing you how a woman can prepare for her house so that her house is in order and there's no fear or anxiety when it comes to things that are unplanned, things that could happen. So one of the things that we do as a family is we follow the Dave Ramsey plan. We have saved up money um, in an emergency fund. So that starts out at $1,000. You do whatever you can to build that up to $1,000. And I remember when we first started doing his plan, getting that to $1,000 felt like it was forever away. And um, just to be able to sacrifice and throw things into that emergency fund. But knowing that we had that, when we had something mess up on the car that cost $350 that we just didn't have budgeted and it was gonna take either away from our groceries or we were gonna have to put it on credit or something like that, having that $1,000 in the bank was very comforting. It was comforting to know that if something like that unplanned happened, then we could fall onto that. So as we build up to that, we are looking to have three to six months of expenses. This is not like frivolous spending. This is what it would take to survive. Food, um, shelter, electricity, things like that. So we have a number averaged out of what it would take for three to six months to survive if my husband lost his job, um, if there was absolutely no way that either one of us could make an income, one of us got sick really bad or something like that, then we would have that three to six months. Now, we had three months worth of savings. We went over budget on our house. We couldn't get any more on the loan. And so we have had to dip into that. So we will be kind of building that back up over the next several months, trying to keep it up so that if something major happens, we have the resources to do that. Another way to prepare for catastrophe or sudden job loss is to have bulk food storage. Now I have already talked to you about all of the things that I keep like in my pantry but another thing that you can do is buy meat in bulk I know that everybody can't do this but um, there are ways of adding meat into your freezer without buying in bulk one of the things that I think is a good idea is anytime the meat that you buy is on sale we prefer 100% grass-fed beef or organic beef or chicken at the store if, if that's where we're buying it. I will buy it when it's on sale a little bit more and then you can throw that in the freezer and save it for harder times. Another way to get meat in the freezer is to buy it in bulk. So we have farmers around here. This is the local Mennonite farm that we buy our meat from and they sell their beef and they also have a butcher shop close by so their prices are I'm not really sure if they're comparable to other farmers around here all I know is that for the cow and to be butchered price per pound is 
around four dollars per pound and they do uh, steaks and stuff like that I honestly don't prefer the steaks so I think we're gonna get mostly just ground beef this time maybe some roasts and any of the bones for bone broth using the whole animal is going to save you money and it's going to be very nutritious for you so we plan on doing that but it's around four dollars a pound if we get it from them so it's very comparable um, if not cheaper than the store for really good quality meat and that's something that we can um, pile into our freezer we plan on getting a whole cow and splitting it with a family that we're friends with so we won't have to have so much beef but that'll probably last us six months ish because when we have stuff like that we will that's all we'll eat we'll eat all the time we also plan on buying a hog from them we have raised hogs before but those types of things i'm just not ready to to raise on my own right now we we had a baby almost a year ago and right before that it was less than a year that we'd had a baby so i'm just a little bit scatterbrained and not ready to take on bigger animals another one that we do plan on doing is raising our own chicken and we have done this before we raised meat chickens before and it is the best chicken ever hands down so i plan on doing that at the beginning of the year raising them it's an eight week process and then we butcher and have a bunch of meat stored in our freezer and it's great so things like that are really good to have in storage and be prepared the last thing I want to talk about is medicine so if you can't if, or if you don't know anything about natural medicine I would say go ahead and start doing your research buy an herbal book somebody that you trust um, I have a few books here on herbal medicine and it comes in handy when you have the time to sit down and look through kind of know what you have growing on your property or close by that you can forage and be able to go ahead and make tinctures or teas or salves whatever it is that you may need um, having this stuff and the knowledge to make it could really come in handy one day and possibly save a life or keep you from getting sick or healing you when you are sick so I like having the books on hand because I don't want to have to rely on my phone all of the time I also like to prepare because tinctures take a while to make so there's a few things that I like to look up and then go ahead and have them ready for when the time comes that we're sick or something like that you can also have homeopathy on hand we love homeopathy just for a lot of things we've we've treated bug bites for it we have treated uh, stings with it we've treated flus and colds and headaches and all kinds of things with it so it is a really good tool to have in your medicine cabinet and you can kind of build up your own stash because with homeopathy you want to take it every 15 to 30 minutes if it is acute and then chronic stuff you can take it once or twice a day so I would really urge you to find out more about and talk to a homeopathy practitioner if you have questions or you want to learn more so I think that that is it for this video I hope that this video didn't scare you but it is helping you to prepare for the unknown and for the future because we are foolish if we think that everything is always going to be peachy that the grocery stores are always going to have exactly what we need or be a, even available to us that we can just buy it when we need it i hope that this helps you to have like a little bit of a guideline on things to prepare for and don't forget to check out out of air in the description box below let me know in the comment section below what you do to prepare and I will see you guys in the next video.